Welcome, I'm Justin, and in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the lead time 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery, and I'm gonna do my very best to make this time spent with me worth your while. And I'm gonna break this video up into chapters so you can easily find what you're looking for. Now, I would appreciate it if you watched the entire video because I am gonna cover a lot, but I also know that sometimes we're in a hurry and we're just looking for certain information. So that's why I'm creating these chapters to make it easy for you to find what you're looking for. And I'll be performing a couple standard tests on this, like a capacity test. We'll test the BMS to make sure that overload protection actually does work. And we'll cover a lot of specs on the battery and a couple other different items that you're gonna find helpful. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about lead time. Recently, they have went through a rebranding of their name from Ampure Time to Lead Time. This company has been around for over 12 years building these type of batteries, and they're a stable company, and they offer great warranties on their batteries. A matter of fact, that battery has a five-year warranty included. And Lead Time offers a variety of batteries, 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt, in all different types of capacities. And they have other products, battery accessories, solar charge controllers, inverters, portable power stations, and a lot more. So I could trust that they're gonna be around if I ever need additional items or if I need to file a warranty claim. And now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the specs of this battery. And I'm gonna spend the next couple of minutes talking about several different items that I think we should cover. I'm always concerned with is the actual dimensions of an item. Because if I'm building out a battery bank, I wanna know what I could fit into an area. So I'm gonna take it from handle to handle, 21 inches. And for the width, we are right at eight inches. And the height, eight and a half inches tall. And another important aspect is the actual weight. We're looking at 44.4 pounds. And this version of the 24 volt battery can be expanded up to four batteries in parallel and two in series, providing you with 20.48 kilowatt hours of capacity and a 48 volt, 400 amp hour battery bank solution. The case is actually constructed out of ABS plastic and the uh, waterproof rating on this is IP65, which is splash proof. And the way that the life cycle is calculated on these batteries are depth of discharge. And the depth of discharge at 100% and in charge back considered one cycle, you could do that 4,000 times, which would put this life expectancy of this battery well over 10 years. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing 100%. I would recommend something like 80% and then charging back. Then you're gonna significantly increase those cycle counts, probably up to 6,000 or so and that would make your battery last well into maybe 15 years or so. But even at 100% and charging back, you're looking at a use out of this battery every day for about 10 years. And while we're on the topic of charging, it's recommended to use a 20 amp charger to charge up the battery. And it's equipped with a built-in 100 amp BMS that can discharge at 100 amp continuously. However, it can surge up to 280 amps for five seconds. And it can provide a max continuous load of 2,650 watts. And it's also equipped with a low temperature charging sensor that will stop charging anytime that it's below 32 Fahrenheit. This actually protects the cells of the battery and doesn't allow it to actually charge when it's below freezing. And if you're gonna be storing the battery, be sure to store it at 50%. Don't store it at 100%. Also consider the actual temperature that it's gonna be stored at. The recommended temperature is anywhere from 50 Fahrenheit to 95 Fahrenheit, and relative humidity should be anywhere from 45% to 75%. And now that I have all that covered, and hopefully you've learned something up to this point, I'm gonna test the battery. We're gonna see if we can pull 100 amp hours out of this at full capacity. And I'm gonna see if I can shut down the BMS, if all possible. And a challenge that I have trying to overload these BMSs is that I have four plugs on the front of this and I have a 4,000 watt inverter that peaks out at 8,000 watts. But our battery has a max output for five seconds of 280 amps, but our continuous is 100 amps, which is around 2560 watts. 
And hopefully, if I run it long enough over that 2500, it shut down a BMS. I've had that happen on other batteries, so hopefully we can do that same type of test and shut that BMS down. And it is more of a challenge than you might imagine trying to find four appliances to push up over that 2500 watts. It sounds like it's really easy, but I usually use a heat gun that pushes up around 1700 watts, a fan and a couple other items, and we'll get right around 2600 to 2800 watts. And we'll see what happens. We'll run it for some time and see if we can overload that BMS. This is my arsenal today. I'm going to be using a large sander, a shop vac. That's very loud. I don't like using it, but it uses 500 watts or somewhere around there. Our heat gun and a large shop fan. And if we need to add more fans or other appliances, I'm going to have two more outlets here. So what I've done, I've run an extension cord over and I'm going to plug the fan in with this one. And if we need more, we'll plug two more appliances into that. So hopefully we can get overloading this battery. So the BMS does work that passed that test. Now we're going to move right on and continue the capacity test. As soon as this uh, kicks back on, we'll get the capacity down and we'll see if we reach that 100 amp hours. 103.63. All I have running now is the heat gun on medium. So this has already passed capacity test. We just want to see how far it can actually go. Now soon we should start getting some alarms because our voltage is getting down around 20 and there they are on cue and the final verdict is 104.05 amp hours out of the 100 amp hour battery i actually had to hook a charger up and get the shunt turned back on so i could show you those numbers Overall, I'm very happy with the performance out of the battery. It passed both of the tests that I like performing on a battery. The capacity test actually surprised me. It went above and beyond what the capacity of the battery. And the reason it surprised me is because when you deplete a battery so fast, like we did in the beginning, I didn't think we were gonna meet the 100 amp hours, but we actually beat that by 4%. We're 104 amp hours and the BMS worked flawlessly. Because we didn't have the opportunity to put such a load on the inverter to get it up to the 5,000 watts or 6,000 watts to shut this down quickly, I think it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Over time, it felt the pain, it shut down, it protected the cells, and I'm happy with that. And my final thoughts on this battery is that it's a great choice for a wide variety of applications. You're gonna be seeing this battery in a lot more of my videos because I have some Decent sized projects coming up and this battery is perfect for them. And if you're interested in purchasing a lead time battery, I'll have a link in the description below where you get the best possible deals. And I appreciate you hanging out with me till the end of the video. And if you found anything helpful about this video or if you just found it entertaining in any way, please smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out. That's all I ask for. And if you're interested, I have a community that I'm building, DIYSolarBuilds.com that is free to sign up for and you can ask questions. And if you're building your own solar system, it's a great community to be part of. I'll Hope to catch you in my next video.